Court is now in session with the Honorable Kwame Rowe presiding. Thank you. Good morning. You may all be seated. Council appearances for the record. Karen McDonald um, on behalf of the people. Thank you, Mark Keith on behalf of the people. David Williams on behalf of the people. Paulette Michelle Lofton on behalf of Ethan Crumley. Amy Hack on behalf of Ethan Crumley. Deborah H. McKelvey on behalf of Ethan Crumley. Thank you and good morning to everyone. You all may be seated. With that being said, we're going to continue the Miller hearing this morning. Before we get started, are there any preliminary issues that we need to address? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Your Honor, at this time, um, understanding your previous ruling and protecting the record, we're moving to um, strike the testimony of Ms. Darnell. We're also renewing our motion to exclude the testimony of the students in this case. At this point, we are at a Miller hearing. We are post-adjudication of guilt or innocence. At a Miller hearing, the focus is on Mr. Crumbly and five factors. His chronological age and the hallmark features of that age, his family and home environment, the circumstances of the homicide offense, and the effect of familial and peer pressures. And in reviewing the case law, what that means, Your Honor, is, is this a solo offender situation? Is it a multiple offender situation? If it's a multiple offender situation, what role did this particular defendant have in that? Obviously, that's not the case in this particular instance. But the other part of that is what effect on this event did Mr. Crumbly's adult, familial, and peers have on this offense? The incompetence associated with his youth and the possibility of rehabilitation. Yesterday, the testimony from Ms. Darnell got into things like how that she communicated with her family, whether she had any regrets about how she communicated with her family, how she was feeling, and things of that nature, which is clearly inappropriate for a Miller hearing. It is appropriate, and our legislature has provided in 769.25 subparagraph 8, that that testimony, that information is appropriate for the sentencing. We are not here at this point for sentencing. That's a future event. And absolutely all of that testimony and the testimony of the students is relevant at that, for that victim impact. So for those reasons, Your Honor, we all have a job to do. We tailored our questions to what information, if any, they had these students and Ms. Darnell and any other school-related person has relative to these five factors. Some of those questions are going to be answered no. Unfortunately, some of those questions are going to evoke some emotion and that's the nature of this case. But setting all of that aside, if the testimony is not directed to those five factors, it is not appropriate to be presented in this hearing and is inadmissible. And for those reasons, we'd ask that her testimony be stricken. She can absolutely come in at sentencing and make all of those comments as well as the students. Thank you, Ms. Hopkins. People, your response? Your Honor, <clears throat> both myself and my office are well aware of what a Miller hearing is. We conduct them frequently. We accept our higher standard, um, and we accept and, and believe we should follow the law. Part of the Miller hearing, we know from Taylor now, is, is not just about the five factors, it comes under the umbrella of it has to be proportional. 
the defendant um, in this case and how he committed this crime and the, the circumstances around it, it are highly relevant. The, the defendant himself expressly wanted to inflict pain and suffering on his victims. And so the testimony is squarely part of this case and it is absolutely appropriate. I want to say a few things about what happened yesterday. First of all, this is not a jury trial. Your Honor is the trier fact. And if there is evidence elicited about somebody's um, suffering or trauma that you don't think expressly relates to a Miller hearing or whether or not you are, it's part of fashioning an individualized sentence, Your Honor can disregard that and, and has told us both in his written orders and in chambers just now that that's exactly what you're going to do appropriately. So that's, that's one thing. Um, the second thing is the defendant's actions and what he stated he wanted to do and how he did it are why we are here. The fact that counsel somehow believes that our only obligation and duty here is to just state that he killed four kids and injured seven others is preposterous. He executed students at point blank range. He wrote about how he was going to do it. The circumstances around how he carried out that crime and his behavior and his demeanor and his interactions with these students are at the core, not only at this, of this hearing, but at the core of why I made the decision, I'm the elected, I'm standing here, and there's a reason, because I believe juveniles should be treated like juveniles, I also believe there are rare exceptions. And this is one, and I believe that, and I will stand by that. But the reason I made that decision, together with my team, is solely based on these horrific details in the way this crime was committed. And so to say that we shouldn't have somehow say it, we shouldn't somehow allow people to take the stand and tell the truth, is offensive. It's offensive and it's unconscionable. And I want to say one other thing. We understand this isn't a victim impact statement. We understand that. We have told every single person that we've interviewed about testifying, listen, you're not here to talk about how this impacted you going further, which by the way, is a really tough thing to do. It's a really tough thing to do to put somebody on the stand who, who until this moment didn't even want to be on this campus knowing that the defendant was sitting over there in jail. The sheer presence in, his, in the room with him is traumatic. It's, it's, a, it's a tough thing to then say, don't talk to me about your pain. It's absolutely relevant in the context of the interactions that they each of these people had with the shooter. I am about to call two students. They are minors. I, I, I will not do that. If the court is going to allow somebody, counsel, to stand up and badger repeatedly people who have been through trauma and ask them about facts that they have stated already on the record they don't know, I will say right now, the two students I'm calling, they don't know, they do not know about the defendant's background. They do not know about what the Miller factors are. They don't, I, I, I don't discuss the Miller factors with them. They do not come in here uh, with a message of vengeance. They did not sign up to do it. And furthermore, they do not waive their right under the Crime Victim Rights Act to, and I quote, the right to be treated with fairness and respect for their dignity and privacy throughout the criminal justice pr process. And I don't know what anyone else in this room thinks about yesterday, but you can't call that treating a, 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 a victim with dignity and respect when she's shaking and she's repeatedly said, I don't know about Miller factors, I don't know about this defendant, and I don't want to. We'll follow the law and we're gonna do the right thing. But I am not putting students on the stand to be re-traumatized for no reason whatsoever. So I would ask that you instruct counsel 
to act professionally, and when a question is asked about something and, and, and a witness says, and a victim says, I don't know, to not repeatedly ask and argue. It's not appropriate. And I have, I, have sat, I have stood here, and I have sat there, and I have sat there, and that is not how we should conduct ourselves. Thank you. With that being said, I'll start with counsel's last statements. As I indicated uh, yesterday, I did continue to sustain the people's objection as Ms. Hopp continued to line the questioning as related to uh, Ms. Darnell, and so I did sustain that objection as I indicated to counsel several times to move on from that line of questioning as that witness had indicated that she had uh, no information as relates personally as it relates to this defendant before the court. Uh, she had not met him before. She had not met him in the lunchroom because those that line of questioning had come up. And so the court had indicated at that time to counsel, please move on from that line of questioning. And I indicated again that the court is sitting as the trier of fact. This is not a jury trial for both sides. This is a Miller hearing as both sides have told the court. The court, again, is sitting as the trier of fact. And so I'm able to discern what's relevant to the Miller factors and what's not relevant to the Miller factors. And so I've been listening very closely to the testimony. I've been listening very closely to the arguments of counsel. I've been taking notes and I've been paying attention to the witnesses on the stand. And so again, I'm able to sparse out what's relevant to the Miller factors and what's not relevant. So first, as it relates to defendant's motion to strike the testimony of Ms. Darnell, again, I am denying that request court will place the appropriate weight on her testimony as it relates to the Miller factors. And again, the court will take the Miller factors and then I will take the facts of this and figure out which of the facts from this case supports the Miller factors. And so that's the appropriate thing to do. And I've advised counsel multiple times through a written opinion and order, as the people pointed out, also in chambers. And so I believe both sides are aware of what this court expects moving forward and I don't expect any witness to be put on the stand and badgered by either side and so I expect for all of us to treat everyone that comes into this court with professionalism and dignity as everyone should be treated in this court. Next as it relates to the two minors testifying um, again the court does not know what these minors will testify to and so I cannot exclude testimony that I don't know what the witnesses will testify to. These witnesses may very well add facts that are relevant to the Miller factors, or they may very well add no facts that are relevant to the Miller factors. I don't know because I don't know what they're going to say. And again, I'm going to listen to them. I'm going to listen to them very closely as I've done with other witnesses. And those things that support the Miller factors, I will take into consideration. Those things that don't support the Miller factors, again, I'm the trier of fact and I will exclude those. With that being said, the motion to uh, strike the two additional witnesses is respectfully denied. Again, let's treat each other with respect. Let's get this hearing done today, hopefully, because again, as I indicated to counsel, I would like this done today instead of going into next Tuesday. So please let's use our time wisely. Again, the court has made this ruling, and I've made this record multiple times, and so I don't expect to have to revisit this issue on either side. And so please abide by the rulings of the court so I don't have to make this ruling again. With that being said, anything else we need to address before uh, the people recall their witness that defense did not have an opportunity to cross-examine? Not from people, Judge. Thank you. Nothing from the defense. Thank you. Thank you. People, you may recall your witness. I'm sorry, I'm looking for his name. It's uh, Detective Edward Rogowski. Thank you, sir. Do you may approach the witness stand. You may also be seated in the witness box, sir. Yes, sir. And, sir, you are still under oath. Yes, sir. Thank you. Defense, your witness. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Can you state your name again for the record? Edward Wolgorowski. All right. I want to go over some of the things that were found first on Ethan's phone, okay? Okay. Um, you were able to look at the internet search history for a few months prior to November 30th, correct? Correct. All right. And um, if you can look at Exhibit B. Okay. You would agree with me that a website that was visited daily was Live Gore, correct? Or almost daily, I should say. Yes, ma'am. 
Um, and are you aware the contents of that website are extremely graphic? Yes, ma'am. It's a website that actual footage of crimes, murders, and assaults are posted, correct? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to draw your attention next to Exhibit A. Okay. And I want to talk about some of the Google searches uh, that were done by Mr. Crumbly. I'm looking specifically at page 19, November 29th, 21, at 8.48 p.m., so about an hour before he made that video that we were shown yesterday. You okay. would agree with me that he looks up, should you do something that can imprison you? Yes. At 847, should you do something that scares you? Yes, he did. All right. I want to draw your attention to page 183. One second. Specifically, November 24th, 2021, at 11.51 p.m. What happens if you have depression and anxiety? Would you agree with me that's what he typed in? Yes, ma'am. That same day, at 8.41 p.m., he Googled, what is mental illness? At 8.40 on the same page? Uh, it's the same date. Oh, I see. 8.41 p.m. 8.41? Yes, ma'am. He also looked up anxiety disorder and what can cause mental illness. That may be it. Yes, ma'am. I see it. All right. 187, page 187. We're looking specifically at November 21st, 21, at 1016 p.m. Oh, what page, ma'am? 187. 187 is all November 24th. All right, if you go, I think it's, it's probably just the next page. It's in the same succession. We're looking for November 21st. Okay. 10.16 p.m.? Yes, ma'am. He's looking up what is the difference between the Army and Army Rangers, correct? Correct. He then goes on to look at what age can you join the Army Rangers, what age can you join the Army? Correct, yes, ma'am. At 1010 on that same day, November 21st, he looks up, what if you don't know if you want to be in 10th grade? Correct, yes, ma'am. He goes further to look up, can you get arrested for not going to school? Correct. At 945, he looks up, what are the necessary grades for high school? Correct? Correct. He goes on further to say what gets you, or to look up, what gets you held back in school? Correct. What is the sense of college? Yes, ma'am, I see it. What does it mean if you aren't going to college? Yes, I see it. Can you get in trouble for not doing homework? Yes, I see it. Okay. I'm going to draw your attention, I believe it's 1,116. We're looking at November 11th of 21, specifically 12.07 a.m., <coughs> which is a school night. Okay. Yes, ma'am. He looks up, am I a sociopath? Correct. Yes, ma'am. It then appears that he did a test to discover if he was... A narcissist. Which one are you referring to? It's in that same succession um, around 12.07 a.m. I see that, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. He looks up, what is a psychopath? On the same day? Um, it may be the following page, but it's the same date. It's just in the succession of those searches on that date and time. Yes, ma'am. What is a sociopath? Are you asking me what is a sociopath? No, no, I apologize. He also Googles what is a sociopath. Correct. He Googles what is it called when you want to kill? Correct. He Googles how do you know if you have gone insane?
Correct, yes, ma'am. Earlier in that night, I believe we're looking now at 1124. He Googles, what can hormones do? Correct. How to tell your doctor that you have depression? Correct. Can a therapist tell the police about a confession? Correct. He Googles, can a therapist tell your parents? Correct. He looks up, what is OCD? Correct. So now we're looking at November 10th at 1148 p.m. Again, a school night. He looks up what what to do if you have thoughts of hurting people. Correct. How to tell your parents that you have depression. Correct. And then it appears uh, in the couple of pages following, he actually took a test to discover if he had depression. The website would make you believe that, yes, ma'am. Okay. So I want to skip ahead to October 12th. I believe we're looking at 1,975. Again, October 12th, 110 in the morning, a school night. Yes, ma'am. He Googles, what chemical reaction happens when you go insane? Correct. I want to skip to September 9th of 21. I believe now we're at 2,172. Okay. At 10.37 a.m., he Googles, will blood come out of a dog when, died, when dies from heart failure? Correct. Correct. What if a dog convulses and dies? He searched that? Correct. Yes. He searched what causes a dog to die from not breathing? Correct. He searches how to move a large dead dog? Correct. He searches who do you call if your dog dies? Correct. I then want to go to September 3rd. I believe we're at 2,185 at 8.01 p.m. Okay. He Googles how to be a fighter pilot in the Air Force, correct? Correct. How do you join the paratroopers? Correct. So I want to move on to a different exhibit. Um, I want to talk about the messages between, if you want to go to exhibit F. Okay. And these are from a cell phone that was reported to be Ethan's, correct? It appears so by the participants listed at the top, yes. Okay. Would you agree with me? Um, this is from 2016, correct? Correct. And at 10-11, or on 10-11 of 2016 at 10.05 p.m., a school night, the text messages are, Mommy, can I get out of here? Correct. He then texts his mom, I don't want to be alone. Correct? Correct. On 10-22 of 2016 at 10-14 p.m., Ethan texts his mom, I don't like being home for too long. Correct? We're looking at page 14. Yes, ma'am. Correct. He then texts, please no. Correct. No 11 o'clock. No later. Correct. Just be here at 11 o'clock. On the next page? Yes. yes correct. Next page. Mommy, can you please be home now? Correct. Can you please be home? Correct. 10.49 p.m. Well, let me back up. There's no responses, correct? Correct. During those messages. Okay. 
I'm going to skip to 10.59, same day. I just don't feel good, that's all. Correct? Correct. And at 11 o'clock, we receive what I believe to be a response um, from the phone number listed as Jennifer's. And the response is, it's okay, buddy. We're right down the road, and the neighbors are watching the house. I'm out with the ski patrol celebrating. It was a big deal today. Please understand. Correct? Correct. I want to look at those in the same messages from January 24th of 2017. What page are you on, ma'am? It would be page 41. Okay. Again, we're looking at text messages sent by <clears throat> Ethan at 1.05 p.m. Mommy. Correct? Correct. No response. At 4.55 p.m., he sends a text saying, the rest of my tooth is coming out. Please come as quickly as you can. Correct? Correct. No response? Correct. Moving on to the more recent text messages, page 113. On March 9th of 2021 at 7.50 p.m., Ethan messages, can you come home now? There is someone in the house, I think, correct? Correct. Someone walked into the bathroom and flushed the toilet and left the light on, correct? Correct. And I thought it was you, but when I came out, no one was home. Correct. There is no one in the house, though, correct? Correct. Dude, my door just slammed. Correct. Maybe it's just my paranoia. Correct. But when are you going to get home? Correct. And there's no response, correct? Not on that day. Correct. All right, now skipping to page 131. We're talking about messages from March 20th at 2.34 p.m. Okay. Um, Ethan sends a text that says, I cleaned until the clothes started flying off the shelf. Correct? Correct. This stuff only happens when I'm home alone. Correct? Correct. Correct. Again, no response. Correct. Page 152, there's an incoming text message from Jennifer that says, your gun came, correct? Correct. And that's April 21st of 2021? Correct. We're going to look at page 202. On 10-11 of 2021, Ethan texts his mom, make sure to get the MP40 on Amazon, correct? Correct. And type it exactly like this, MP40. Make sure to add the dash in it. That's how you will find the one for $185. Correct. Is that correct? And Jennifer responds, okay. Correct? Yes, ma'am. We'll move ahead to page 214, the bottom of the page. Jennifer texts Ethan, seriously, question mark, looking up bullets in school, question mark, correct? Correct. Ethan responds, what? Oh, yeah, I already went to the office for that. It was in first hour. All I did was look up a certain caliber at the end of class because I was curious. It was on my phone. Completely harmless. Correct? Yes, ma'am, correct. And at some point... Um, at about 12.13, Jennifer responds, well, let me back up. 
Ethan texts his mom previous to that, this is not something I should get in trouble about, correct? Correct. And Jennifer's response is, you're not. They left me a voicemail. Correct? Correct. Following page 217, Jennifer texts, did you at least show them a pic of your new gun? Correct. And he responds, no, I didn't show them a pic of my, it says God, but I believe it was supposed to be gun, correct? It, it says, no, I did not show them the pic of my God. My God, yep. yes. On the following page on 218, Jennifer responds, LOL. I'm not mad. You have to learn not to get caught. Correct? Correct. If you could go to exhibit G. So you said G? G, yes. We're looking at the messages, uh, Facebook messages between James and Jennifer Crumbly. That is something you were able to pull off of the phones. Is that correct? This, this would have come from a search warrant okay. return. Understood. So you would agree with me if we're looking at the first page there. Unfortunately, they're not numbered. Um, James messages, um, I just picked up Ethan, Rainey, no snow, LOL, correct? Correct. Jennifer responds, is he still being weird and depressed? Correct. And James responds, no, correct? Correct. And we're and these are the dates on these are ten twenty seven of two thousand and twenty, correct? Yes, ma'am. I want to then go just to the next physical page and we're looking at messages from March eighth of two thousand and twenty one. Jennifer messages James, why isn't he home yet? Correct? Correct. At the bottom of the page. Correct. He should be home by now. Correct? Correct. She then states, freaking out. Correct. He responds, he does not get home till 316. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Jennifer responds, I told you to pick him up because he's upset, and I don't want him to do anything stupid, God damn it. Correct? Correct. And James' response is, dude, chill. He's fine. I'm just trying to fucking work. Correct. She then says, does he have his phone? Correct? Correct. And James responds, yes, but he won't answer while he's walking. I'll let you know the minute he walks in. Correct. And Jennifer's response is, I'm seriously freaking out. Correct. The next page, we're looking at messages that were retrieved from March 19th of 2021. Jennifer texts James, Ethan awake, question mark? Correct. Response, um, yeah. Yes, correct. Following page, Jennifer asks, how is he? Correct. James responds, he woke up looking like he had way too much to drink last night, complaining about a headache, correct? Correct. She responds, well, he was really worked up and out of control, so I can see why. Correct. James responds, I apologize. Jennifer then sends another message. All I know is he needs to eat, go to work, work hard, and not complain, and he'll be able to get his stuff back. Correct? Correct. Later in the conversation, James messages, he said, let me ask you a question. Why am I in your guy's room, LOL? Correct. And Jennifer responds, capital letters, OMG. Correct. James then messages, I totally thought you were giving him a Xanax last night. Correct. Jennifer says, does he seem better? No, melatonin. Correct. James, Jennifer messages, but he hasn't had one before. Should have only gave him half, correct? Uh, correct. 
James then messages, he is just doing his school, says his head hurts, he took some Tylenol, correct? Cor correct. Okay. Later in the message at the bottom of the page, Jennifer says, does he remember what he did? Correct? Correct. Following page, James responds, dude, I am working on a demo right now. I have not talked to him and he's doing school. Correct. At 2.06 p.m., so a little bit later, Jennifer then turns to the discussion about the horses. Are we going to the barn, correct? Correct. And James responds, was plan on going out after I take Ethan to work, correct? Correct. Jennifer asks, how is he doing, correct? Yes. Following page, James says, he says he's not feeling well and <clears throat> headache, but he's got to suck it up. Correct. Jennifer then says, are you giving him his phone? I don't want him going on not feeling well. Correct. And James responds, I will give him his phone. He has to go to work. Can't call out 1.5 hours before a shift. That's shitty. Correct. I want to then move to the next page. We're talking about March 29th of 21. Okay. In a message uh, that Jennifer sent to James, we're looking at the third line of that larger message at the top of the page. Do you agree with me that she says, Ethan's braces, those need to be handled. They need to come off. I'm not investing any more money in those. Correct, that's part of the message, yes. We'll move to the following page, specifically towards the bottom of the page, April 29th of 21, message from Jennifer, I wonder if we can get Ethan's counselor at school to talk to him. Is that correct? Correct. All right, we're gonna skip a little bit ahead. We're looking for, and again, unfortunately, these pages are not numbered in the discovery. Looking for a date of April 29th of 21. Okay. Jennifer messages, Ethan home, question mark. What, what time is that at? It's at the very top of the page. Looks like the previous page says the time is 12.52. Correct, I see it. Okay. And James responds, yes, I picked him up, correct? Yes, ma'am. And Jennifer says, how is he? Correct. And James responds, seems fine. I left a message for the school counselor earlier. The office person said they were leaving early but would call me back tomorrow, correct? Correct. Now, you also examined uh, messages between Ethan and... Um, a juvenile that he was in constant communication with. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I'll have you look at Exhibit H. You would agree with me that um, from these messages, you can tell that these two individuals spoke nearly daily and all day long, correct? Correct. Even into the very early morning hours um, and late evening, correct? Correct. All right. So we'll start on page 1522. We're talking about March 3rd, 21, 5, 12 a.m. I know they aren't, but I still have extreme paranoia, correct? Well, I gotta point something out. Sure. That 
It's UTC time on there, which means it's not adjusted for the actual time. Okay. So it should be more like one in the morning or something like that. One in the morning. Okay. Uh, but yes, he says it. Following page, he then messages, my, ba my brain literally makes me see that there is someone standing there when there isn't. Correct? Correct. Like my arm would move up by itself. That's how bad my, how bad paranoia I have. Correct. We'll move to page 1690. We're looking at messages from March 10th of 2021. Okay. Holy shit. There's actually is no one home. The door opened, the light turned on, and I saw and heard someone walk out, but no one is home, correct? Correct. He then moves on to say the toilet even flushed. Correct. And fucking tank is barking now. Correct. I'm not joking, RN, or right now, correct? Correct. I'm legit scared. Correct. We'll go to page 1697. Okay. In the middle of the page, he messages, dude, help. Correct? Correct. Following page. Dude, there's a ghost in my house. I'm not fucking joking. Correct. Page 1,702. Okay. The bottom of the page, and that's the same day, same time, same discussion thread. I texted my parents, but they haven't responded. Correct. All right, let's move to March 17th of 21, which is page 1,953. Would you agree with me? Obviously, I know that the time is not accurate like it's stated, but would you agree with me early morning hours? Correct. Yes, ma'am. One thought that keeps coming back to me is how after school I have no plan in life. Correct. I'm most likely going to be homeless. Correct. I have no desire to do anything. Correct. Following page, it's what keeps me up all night. Correct. I want to then draw your attention to page 1,959. We're still talking about the same day, same thread. Okay. Ethan messages, and that when you're an adult, you can't go back, ever. You're stuck going forward until everything turns black, forever. There won't be anything after life for the rest of existence, correct? Correct. Never, ever will there be another life. Never, ever can you go back to your young life. The end is near and is getting closer every second. Correct. I then want to direct your attention to page 2041. Okay. We're, 
looking at messages from March 17th. Dude, I keep hearing footsteps, correct? Yes, ma'am. We'll move forward to page 2043 in that same text thread. I kind of do hope you can get FN back. I take that to mean Fortnite from reading the messages because I am legit shaking RN right now. And my mom had the audacity to not respond to me. Correct? Correct. Something is in the living room again. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Page 2045, that same text thread. Help me, dude. Oh, fuck, I'm having a heart attack. Correct? Correct. Following page. I have to get out of this house. There is shot, I believe it was supposed to be shit, being thrown around. Correct? Correct. And you would agree with me that for the next number of pages, Mr. Crumbly is indicating all of these things that are occurring in the house. Correct. We'll jump ahead to page 2051, same text thread. My parents aren't even answering back. Correct? At the top of the page, yep. 2051. Yep. Correct. I want to jump ahead to page 2,386. Specifically a message where the time is listed 3.50 a.m. Obviously, I know that that time is not correct, but we're talking early morning hours, late evening, early morning correct. hours. Correct. He sends a message stating, I had a fucking breakdown two days ago after work, correct? Correct. Now my mom thinks I take drugs, correct? Correct. Like she thinks that the reason why I'm so mad and sad all the time is because I take drugs and she doesn't worry about my mental health, correct? Correct. Following page. I try to act happy for them because when I'm grumpy then I get my shit taken away and yelled at. And then they make myself look I'm, like I'm causing all the misfortune. Correct? Correct. Following page, they make me feel like I'm the problem. I fucking lost it in the shower. I had no memory of that night. Correct? Correct. Following page, from what my mom said is that I went outside on shorts and talked to myself. LOL. I don't know if that's true. Correct? Correct. Following page doesn't sound like me, and I don't even remember it. My dad is just mad and sad, and my mom makes everyone feel like a piece of shit. Correct? Correct. We'll go to now uh, 2,393. Same text thread. Now we're looking at says 3.55, so even later or earlier in the morning. I'm also hallucinating. Sounds crazy, but I am a little bit. Correct? Correct. Following page, same text read. Like I hear people talking to me and see someone in the distance. Correct? Correct. Following page, same text read. I actually asked my dad to take me to the doctor yesterday, but he just gave me some pills and told me to suck it up. Correct. Like it's at the point that I'm asking to go to the doctor. Correct. My mom laughed when I told her. Correct. We'll then skip to page 2,411. Okay. Same text thread. 
This is the first time I have told someone, but in Spanish class before break, I was dozing off and I could see a girl with short blonde hair standing right next to me and say, will you be mad if I wake you up? Correct? Correct. We'll then go to page 2415. I know you probably don't even believe me, like I'm just doing this for attention. Correct? Correct. I'm not, man. I need help. I was thinking I calling 911 too so I could go to the hospital. Correct? Correct. Following page, but then my parents would be really pissed. Correct. Following page. Sometimes I even tell myself that I am, but then like who? Who am I doing this to get their attention? There's no one. Correct? Correct. Then on page 2421, the juvenile that he's texting with says, when did all this bad shit start happening? Correct? Correct. And Ethan's response is two weeks ago, correct? Correct. On page 2,429, looks like it's the same text thread. I just want things to go back to normal. It's the only thing that has been going through my head for a month. Correct. Following page, I never know when I'm going to hear a voice or see a person standing at the end of the hall in my house. I even see it at work sometimes. Correct? Correct. Yes, ma'am. We'll then move to page 2,436. Looks like it's the same text thread. Okay. Ethan texts, everyone needs a safe place in their life. I don't feel safe anywhere. Correct? Correct. Following page, same text thread. I'm going to ask my parents to go to the doctors tomorrow or Tuesday again. Correct. But this time I'm going to tell them about the voices. I only told them about the people I saw. Correct. Page 2,440, same text thread, like I'm mentally and physically dying. Correct. You would agree with me from review of these messages in October of 2021, the messages stopped, correct? correct. The responses stopped, I should Yes. Say. And in reviewing those messages, you did not find any explanation from the juvenile that he was texting as to why there was no more response, correct? Correct. Thank you very much. I have no other questions. Thank you. Redirect. Thank you. I'll be very brief there. Thank you. Uh, Detective, you weren't in the courtroom yesterday when we put on the record, but we stipulated to all these exhibits. It's, it's part of the record. That's um, what she read to you. That's what the defendant wrote. So I just want you to understand that. Okay. That there's no quarrel there. So you review the entire phone, you review the images, the text messages, the Facebook messages between James and Jennifer Crumbly. And I also, I want to talk to you just a little bit about what else is there. So we hit on a lot, defense counsel hit on the months of March and April, in the springtime of 2021. So while the defendant was also texting these text messages to his friend, he was also writing about certain themes. And as you review the phone, certain themes appeared. Is that right? Correct. These themes were hurting the defenseless? Correct. Specifically children. Is that right? Yes, sir. Multiple text messages about the desire to drown children? Yes. A, a desire to kidnap and rape a fellow student? Yes. A desire to torture kids? Yes, sir. Also a theme emerged about 
the need to kill an animal to satisfy an urge. Would that be right? Correct. And so we displayed some text messages yesterday. That went from March of 2021 all the way to late June of 2021. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. In fact, one of the text messages was, I need to kill again right now. Does that sound familiar? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, according to Exhibit 55, that's the People's Exhibit 55, the, the search items that you testified to regarding the keyword school, it, at least according to one search of the defendant's phone, at least if you just were to plug in the word school in the, his Google searches, the defendant was searching about school shootings as early as November the 6th, 2021. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay, so that's a full three weeks before he actually committed the attack on Oxford High School. Correct. Okay. I have nothing further, Judge. Thank you. With that being said, any reason why this witness should not be excused? None at all. No, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. With that being said, sir, you may step down. You may also leave the courthouse if you wish. Yes, sir. Thank you. People, you may call your next witness. Thank you. With that being said, I am asking members of the media, please do not photograph or video record any minors that will be testifying. Please turn your cameras away from those individuals. You can still record their audio, but please do not capture their faces and broadcast their faces. Yes, if you could face it down or towards someone else, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. And call Heidi Allen. Thank you. You're going to stand in the witness box. My clerk is going to give you an oath, and then if you could, please affirm that oath if you're going to tell the truth. That being said, if you could, please administer the oath. Please raise your right hand. Under penalty of perjury, do you swear or affirm the statements you're about to make to this court will be the whole truth? Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And Heidi, how old are you? I'm 17. Thank you. And Heidi, do you understand the difference between telling the truth and a lie? Yes. And obviously, if I sit ahead on a red road right now, would that be the truth or a lie? A lie. Thank you. And on this record today, do you promise to tell the truth? Yes. Thank you. If you could, please tell me your full name and then spell your last name for me. My name is Heidi Allen, A-L-L-E-N. Thank you. People, your witness. And if you could, you have a very light voice. If you could, please just yes. keep your voice up for me, okay? Thank you. People, your witness. Good morning, Heidi. Good morning. Uh, I, know, I know you can project your voice. So okay. <laughs> I, I want you to do that. I will. Um, you're 17, correct? You have to say yes or no. Yes. Okay. And where, you're still in high school. Yes. Where do you go to school? I go to Oxford High School. Okay. What grade are you in? I'm going to be a senior. Okay. But you're, you're off for the summer right now. Yes. Okay. And how long have you been going to the Oxford public schools? Um, since kindergarten. Okay. So you, you live close by and that's like the school you've gone to your whole life? Yes. Okay. Uh, what grade were you in on November 30th, 2021? I was in 10th grade. Okay. And if you can remember, you were a sophomore, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. What was your uh, schedule like? What, 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 was your, what did you start in the morning or did it change each day? Um, I believe it changed each day, but I don't fully remember. I know my schedule for that day. Okay. Can you tell the court what your schedule was that day? Yes. So first hour I had language arts, and then I can't remember my second hour. Okay. But I know third hour I had chemistry, and then fourth hour I had choir. Wait, I don't actually remember. Oh, I had Chinese fourth hour. Okay. And then fifth hour I had math. Sixth hour I had choir, and then seventh hour I had history. Heidi, when was your lunch? My lunch was during fourth hour. Okay. And the way it works is it's sort of in the middle of fourth hour, is that right? Yes. Or is it, okay. Um, I, I'm going to direct your attention over there mm -hmm. to that screen. Yes. Can you, uh, Mark is going to put the, the dot where you tell him, but where, where were you eating lunch? I was eating lunch in the commons. Okay. And do you remember about what time lunch ended and you headed to your next class? So lunch ended and I went to fourth hour. And then fourth hour, I'm not sure what time it ended. I, have, I actually don't remember what time it ended. Okay, 
What, um, where on the map was your fourth hour? My fourth hour was 516 classroom. Right there? Nope. Yes. Okay. So you can see those numbers up there. That's impressive. Yes. Um, okay. So you ended fourth hour, correct? Yes. All right. And what did you do next after fourth hour? During, you were, went out during passing time? Yes. Okay. After passing time, I went down the 400 hallway. Okay. And then I went down to all the way unto 241 to drop my stuff off. Okay. About right there? Yes. Okay. And you dropped your stuff off. What do you, what kind of stuff? Just my backpack and my phone and probably my coat at the time. I'm not sure. Okay. But, but it was using lockers at the time because No, we were not correct. using lockers. Yes. Okay. So you drop your things off and you still have some time. So when Yes. You, okay. So I I actually had to use the bathroom in my 4th hour class, but I decided I'll just go before 5th hour. Okay. So then I went down from 241 and I could have gone to I was debating going to the bathroom across from 233, but I ended up going to the bathroom right after 258. Right up there? Yes. Okay. Where the red dot is? Yes. All right. And uh, you used the bathroom? I didn't make it to the bathroom. Okay. So you're heading down the 200 hallway. Yes. Have you turned the corner yet when you noticed something was unusual? No, I turned the corner and nothing was unusual at that point. Okay. When, when did something occur that was... So it was right around the middle of maybe 256 and 258 when I noticed the shooter came out of the bathroom, but I didn't notice anything was wrong at first until I, when I heard everything, um, I heard a gunshot and then I saw what was happening at the same time. Okay. The defendant, the shooter... Did, when did you first see him? Um, when he came out of the bathroom. Okay, and did you know him? Yes. Can you describe what he was wearing and, and what he looked like? Yes, he was wearing all black and a hat and a black mask and just all black pretty okay. much. Um, how did you know who it was? So I wasn't his, we weren't friends or anything, I just knew of him. Um, we had gone to school since middle school, and he'd always been a classmate, but I think I had only talked to him maybe once or twice. Okay. So, um, how would you describe him in class? He was very quiet. Okay. He didn't answer when people talked to him. It was just quiet. Okay. Um, so, you don't, you didn't at the time know anything about no. him? You weren't friends? No. Okay. You never socialized with him? No, not really. I mean, doing things outside of school? No, never. Okay. Um, but you did know his name? Yes. All right. And when you looked up and saw him, what did you think? Um, well, a million things went through my head at that point, at that point but um, I knew exactly who it was, but I just couldn't. At the same time, I just thought it maybe it's, there's no way that could be him. Okay. When did you first notice... The gun. The gun? When it first went off. Actually, when he walked out of the bathroom, I noticed, but I didn't really process it until it went off. Okay, and how did you notice? What did you see? Um, he had walked... Can you explain? Was there, was there a gesture or something that... Yes, was, okay. he did a gesture that was up and down with Okay, can the you gun. show the court? Yes, it was like this. Okay, the record should reflect she's raising her right arm level with her eyesight. Thank you, so reflected. And that's when you noticed it was him? Yes. Okay, and you just said... I didn't believe it was him. Yeah, I just what, thought it away. What do you mean when you say that? Because I just didn't understand how something like somebody could do something like that. Just anyone, you know. Okay. Um, you saw the gun. Yes. And then what happened? And then, so it fired off, and t for me, it felt that there was a pause, but everything kind of slowed down for me from real time. It was all very slow motion, so. I had covered my head, and supposedly, what I remember, I dropped down, and... Um, I want to stop you for just a moment. Yes. Who, what was the hallway, what was it like? Were there, how many kids were in the hallway at that point, and where, 
who was in front of you? Oh yes. Okay. Around? Did you know at the time? Yes, Phoebe. Um, Phoebe was right in front of me. Did you know Phoebe? No, I didn't. No. Okay. Did you know anyone else in the hallway at that time? No, actually. Okay. Not really. Um, so Phoebe was in front of me. Her boyfriend was next to her, and then there was a group of girls across from me, around across from me, and then um, it was very quiet. There was no screaming, nothing. It was just the gunshots. And how many shots? I don't know. It was a lot. It, what did it sound like? It sounded like a balloon popping or like a locker slamming. It was very loud. Okay. And you said you dropped down? Yes. Okay. Did you drop down because you were hit? Um, no, I dropped down because I just, that's just what I had, my reaction. That was your instinct? Too. Yes. Okay. And what did you do when you dropped down? I just prayed. And I covered my head because I, I didn't know if those were my last moments. Okay. What happened next? Um, since it was slowed down for me, what I remember is him running or walking past me. And I just closed my eyes because I thought he was coming up to me. How did you know he was walking past you? I don't know. I just could feel it. And then I just closed my eyes, and then eventually I realized he was gone because I opened them to look around, and he was gone. What did you see, Heidi, when you looked around? I saw two girls across from me, and then down the hall was another girl. When you say that you saw them, what were they doing? Just laying there. And then I saw a girl in front of me. I want to, I'm sorry, but you have to keep your voice up just a little bit. Yes, yeah. And then there was a girl in front of me who was the only one who was responsive. So, responsive to what? Yes, so I asked everybody in the hallway from where I was at if anybody had been hit, and nobody had answered me because they couldn't. Okay, and one person did? Yes, Phoebe answered me. Okay, at the time, did you know her name? No, I did not. All right, what did she say? She started to cry. I don't exactly remember her exact words, but she just started to cry. So then I had told her that she was going to be okay, and I helped her up, and then I had to figure out where to go. So, um, but at that point, there had been an announcement made when I was on the ground. Um, and so uh, I had to figure out where to go because all the classrooms had been shut at that point. Um, thankfully, there was a classroom that was open, and it Wait, was... Can we look up the Yes, map? 258. So that classroom just happened to be wide open? Yes. And no one was in it? Yes. Do you know why? Um, I think the teacher had a prep hour. Okay. Um, Heidi, you said you saw the defendant lift his arm. Yes. You saw the gun. Did you see anybody get shot? Yes. Who? Um, I saw Phoebe get shot, and I saw her boyfriend, and then I saw the group of girls, and then I turned away. Okay. Do you know how many shots there were? I have no idea. Okay. So you see the empty classroom. Yes. And then what happens? Um, I helped her get up, and then I took her into that classroom, and immediately put the safety lock in. The night lock? The night lock, yes. Katie, how did you know how to install the night lock? Yes, so we had a, we've had drills every, we have drills every year since middle school, and um, we had a drill the month prior, and a teacher had randomly called on me in class to go put the lock in, and how at the time... How many people did she call on? Um, just a few. Okay. But I was... First it was me, and then she counted down from 10. And I didn't know how to do it. And um, I couldn't figure it out. And so she came over and she showed me exactly how to do it. So then when that moment came, I knew exactly how to do it. Do you Put think you in. would have known if she hadn't done that? No, absolutely not. Okay. So is, is Phoebe standing at this point? Can she walk? Yeah, she was walking, so I helped her up. Um, and uh, as soon as I put the lock in, I took her to the middle of the room. And what, then, were you, what were you saying to Phoebe? What was one of the first things that you said? She's going to be okay. Okay. I just kept reassuring her that she was going to be okay. I, I had no idea. Was I she don't, making any kind of noise verbally? Um, she was crying, and I, I don't fully remember what she was saying, but I, I don't know. Okay, and were you trying to be quiet? Um, I was trying to stay calm. Okay. Yeah. So you get the night locked in, and then what do you do? I took her to the middle of the room, and then I asked her where she had been shot. And or where she had been hit, and she didn't know, but there was just blood everywhere. So, but what do you mean when you said blood everywhere? There was just blood 
on her clothes, and then it was starting to get on me, but we didn't know where it was coming from. Okay. Yeah, so then I had asked her um, where it hurt, and then she said it was in her arm, so I thought it, maybe it was in her arm, but then she took her shirt off, and it was right on her chest area. And then there was another shot, I believe, on her neck. And so I immediately took her sweater, and I put pressure on it, because that's all I know how to do. I, I don't know how to handle that stuff, because I just have never learned how. Um, was she laying down at this point? or um... She was sitting up. Okay. So we were sitting on the floor, she was sitting up, and then I, then I started to pray with her, because I didn't know what else to do, and... What did you say to her? I asked her if she knew who God was, and she had said not really, but I said, I, I think I'm supposed to be here right now, because there's no other reason that I'm okay, I'm supposed, that I'm in this hallway, completely untouched. Uh, Heidi, do you know if you were the only person in the hallway that didn't get shot? I don't know. Okay. Um, everyone around you did? Yes? Yes. Okay. So you're praying with her? Yes. And then, then what do you do? So after we prayed, I needed to find a phone because mine was still in the classroom. I, I don't bring my phone with me anywhere. And uh, so then... Uh, we went all the way to the back where there was a school phone, and she asked to call the police, and I said, I'm sure they're already on their way. I'm, I know a million people are already calling them. So then... Were you hearing any sounds at this point? Um, there was just some slight gunshots, but at this point, probably not. Okay. Um, so then uh, we took out... She pulls her phone out, which... And then we went to a, the farthest point from the door we could. So... Um, and the lights were off, and then... We had called her mom, and then we had told her mom what happened. Who was talking to her mom? Me. What were you saying? I said, well, she initially answered the phone, and then she said, Mom, it's me. I've been shot. Um, and then I took the phone, and I started talking, like, she's going to be okay. What was, you know, what was mo her mom's reaction? Did she, had she already heard about the... No, she, was, she obviously was, had a hard time with it. Okay. What does that mean? Um, she was panicking. Okay. And so... Uh, so she was trying to talk with her, and so I was trying to talk with her as well, just to reassure that she's going to be okay, and just to keep her with me. And so then I, um, and then she had to go because she had to call her dad. So then when she hung up the phone, I called my dad. I mean, I tried to call my mom twice first, and then it wasn't working. It wasn't a, a number she... No, yeah, exactly. It was the number she knew. Phone. Right. Okay. And so um, I called my dad, and my dad answered, like, immediately. And I had explained to him what happened, what was going on. And then I started to get worked up, and then he said, just keep doing what you're doing. you got to stay calm. What were you worked up about? Um, I started to realize what the situation was. What and was the situation? That there was a school shooting. And it's, I started to get worked up about that. Did you um, have any siblings in the school? Um, I did. I do have a sister that was at the school, but she she went to the school, but she had online that hour, so she was not there. Okay. Um, so you hang up with your dad, and then what do you do? After that, I believe she called her mom back, and we just kept talking to her until I heard people in the hallway that I assumed to be police. And do you know if you can remember where you saw? The, the bullet holes in her body. Yes, it was about right here. And you're pointing to your my chest. Chest, like right around where your collarbone is. Yes. Okay. And then on her neck, your left, lower left neck. side of the neck. Yeah. Okay. And then her mask had blood on it, but I'm not sure if she was shot on her face or not. Okay. And what's happening to her physically during this time? Is she continuing to bleed? Is she? Yeah, she was continuing to bleed a lot. So was she in pain? Yes. Well, at first she wasn't. She couldn't feel anything. And and then it started to, the shot kind of started to wear off, I think. So then she started to start to cry. And I had taken my sweatshirt off because hers had been soaked. So I took my sweatshirt and I put it on her. And I just kept talking to her to stay with me. Okay. And was she getting, did, did you feel like she was getting to the point where she was going to be unconscious? Or was she alert the whole time? Um, so she had been alert, and then there was times where she would start to zone off, and that's when I really had to just talk with her, just to keep her with me, but 
I don't, I don't know. Okay. Are you continuing to put pressure on, on her? Yes, wings? the okay. whole time. And, and how long were you in that room, if you know? I have no idea. I have no idea. What did it feel like? It felt like a really long time. Okay. And how did, what happened so that you could actually get out of the room and get, get her help? Yes. So, um, I did end up having to leave her because she was all the way in the back and at that point she couldn't move anymore. So I had to run back and forth just to see if anybody was coming and then finally I saw police there. So where, where were you, how did you tell someone was coming? Um, I could hear voices in the hallway. Just, okay. it was sounded... There, was there a window on that? There was a window, yes. Okay. So, so you were looking out? Yes, I kept looking out the window and then I finally saw peop like police officers. Did you, were you worried it might be a... Did you know where the shooter was? Did you know if this was still going on? I, I knew that it wasn't the shooter. I just knew in my, I just felt that it was one person, and I knew exactly who it was, and he wasn't in that area anymore. Okay. Um, at one point, did you get somebody to come and help you? Yes, so I took out the safety lock, and they were helping other people and still running around. So I wanna, I, hold on a second. Oh. You took it out because they told you to, or you took it out because you determined that it was probably safe? I took it out because I determined it was safe. Okay. And I started yelling in the hallway that I needed help. And um, someone came in and walked in, but they did, weren't sure what was going on. And um, when you say someone, was it someone in law enforcement? Was yes, it, it was. Um, I'm not sure. Do you remember what color uniform he was wearing? Was he wearing uniform? Yes, he was wearing uniform. Okay. Yes, and it was, um, can I say his name? Yes. No. Okay, Sergeant Hubble. Okay. He came in and he um, didn't fully realize what was going on because he was so focused on, you know, making Trying sure everybody, right. right. And um, so then I finally yelled and I was like, I need help right now. And so he came over and realized my hand slipped from her wound. And so he realized what was going on. And so. So when I was helping her, um, he asked her if she could get up, and she said, no, I, I can't move. And so um, my hand slipped, and then he saw that, oh, my goodness, she's bleeding, like she's been because shot. Because there was blood on your hand is what you're saying? No, my hand slipped from her wound. Oh, I yes. see. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. And so then um, he helped me move her to a swivel chair. A swivel chair? Yes. Okay. And then he, he had left and then came back, and then... We had taken her out into the hallway. And Heidi, what did you make sure when she was on that chair when she got in the hallway? That she wasn't faced the way that everything was being handled. You did that? Yes. Why? Because I didn't want her to see it. What What did that hallway look like? Um, it was chaos. Uh, there was... There was someone trying to be resuscitated. And... The, somebody, whoever, whoever was helping her, was yelling at her, like, come on, like, come on, you get this, and stuff, trying to just get her to respond. Did you at some point learn who that was, who was on the, on the, that needed resuscitation? Yes. Who was it? Hannah. Okay. What and else then, did you see? Um, then Kylie was sitting up, just, just, just sitting up against a wall, just zoned out, kind of, just nothing. It just looked like there was nothing there. And then um, Madison was at the end of the hallway, just by herself. Did you know the names of those girls before? Mm -hmm. I did name? not. Okay. Did you see anything that made it seem like they were wounded? Yes. What did you see? Well, by Madison there was blood, just a pool of blood. And then... Uh, there was just a lot of blood on Hannah and Kylie, and you could see their wounds. Okay. And, and you, Phoebe couldn't see this because you turned no. her. Okay. And what, what did you do? I, had, I kept helping her, and we were still on the phone with her mom, and I'm, I just told her mom to keep talking with her just to keep her going. And then um, someone came over to help me, or wasn't really sure if I needed help, but I, I needed help, and so I was telling this person to help me. Mm -hmm. um, and so eventually she took the phone as I was still putting pressure, and then she held it while I talked with her mom, and the ambulance was just right outside, just okay. right outside. And then at, 
at what point were you, could you leave the school? Um, so they took Phoebe away, and I was still left in there. And at one point, an officer told me just to look at the wall. So I did, and I just looked at the wall. And how long were you there before you could leave? Your dad came to get you at some point, right? Yes. I, I don't know how long it was, but it, it did feel like a long time. Okay. Um, hi. You've seen the the video. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm going to show it again. Yes. So that you can identify it. And this starts in the, the 200 hallway when you turn the corner. Okay. Yes. And um, I don't think the media is filming. Heidi wore the, the image, correct? Okay. And that should continue. You're not to record the video screen when sensitive information is put on the screen. With that being said, um, again, the court has reviewed this already, and so um, I will ask counsel to get through it, but you may proceed. Okay. Thank you. And, Your Honor, one of the reasons that we're showing this again is um, – it's very difficult without watching this several, several times to identify who was who and what was happening because it all happened so fast. So I do want to show the court and point out exactly where Heidi was in relation to the shooter. Before the video starts, I will note that if there's anyone that does not wish to watch this video, this is the perfect time to step out of the courtroom if you wish. Again, there's a composure room that's outside of the courtroom, and so if you do not wish to watch this, this is the perfect time to step out. Thank you. Let the court know when you appear on this. I'm on the screen right now. Okay, and you're behind. Yes, I'm behind the... That's you right there? Yes. Okay. Just so I'm clear who you are in this um, screen, are you the person on the left-hand side further towards the back? Yes. Thank you. The cursor's on it right now, Your Honor. Thank you. Now, you're not moving, but what, what's happening right now? I'm asking if anybody's been hit, and then Phoebe was the only one that responded. What, what are you saying to her? You both went in the, the room? Yes. What am I saying? Yes. Um, I'm asking her, or I'm telling her she's going to be okay. I didn't know the severity of where she had been shot. You told her a lot she was going to be okay, correct? Yes. Did you know that? No. I had no idea. Thank you. With that being said, cross-examination, please keep the court's prior comments in mind. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With that being said, any, thank you. Any reason why this witness should not be excused? None at all. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You may step down. You may also leave the courthouse. Thank you. Your Honor, may we briefly approach? Yes.